Hi everyone. This video will show you how to use auxiliary features. After you create a project and load the point cloud data, click the file tab and go to open project where you can manage the project here. The second one is new project where you can save or discard the current project. The third one is open recent where you can select a recent project. The fourth one is add data where you can load the desired point cloud file. The fifth one is save project. You can also click save project as. The seventh one is settings. For units, you can edit angle, volume, and decimal place values. For categories, you can set different color categories. For others, you can set the default font size, point size, point type, brightness, contrast, and cache path. Finally, click quit to close the app directly. The above is the introduction to the functions on the file tab. In this session, we will show you how to use the gadgets on the left one by one. The first one is the centering button. When you drag the point cloud to another area or can't find it, click this button to return it to the center. The second one is to change projection methods, including orthographic projection and perspective projection. Orthographic projection has no distortion, while perspective projection has the perspective effect for you to go inside the point cloud and view it directly. When you click the button to switch to orthographic projection, you can't go inside the point cloud. Only in perspective projection, you can go inside the point cloud. The third one is the 2D slash 3D switch. When switching to the 2D view, you can't rotate the point cloud in a 3D manner. Switch to the 3D view to rotate it. The fourth one is to lock the view. Once locked, the point cloud can't be moved. The following four icons are for setting the point cloud color. Select a point cloud and click these four icons to display it by RGB. Height and intensity. Intensity or time respectively. You can also use these color modes in the displays tab. Then, the following three icons are for setting view directions. You can change to different views here. You can also use the measurement feature on the left toolbar. Before measuring, you need to adjust to the front view. You can measure the coordinates of a single point or the distance. To measure the distance indoors, you can use a clipping box to section the roof and measure your desired area. You can rotate it all around as needed. You can also move it up and down. If the clipping box blocks your view during operation, click the icon here to disable the yellow frame and clipping box. Further, you can measure the house's height by selecting a point on the roof and one on the ground. Then, you can see the displayed height data. The next two icons are for angle measurement and area measurement. After the measurement is done, click square root to save it and quit the command. Then, you can see the save measurement data under the label tab. The above is the introduction to the measurement tools. The last one is the clipping box. You can use it to clip some and use scan points. Polygonal clipping is used frequently. Select a target internal point cloud area and click segment in. Then you only get the selected internal point cloud range. You can also select an external point cloud area and click segment out. Then. You can also get the selected internal area. You have two ways to save it. Cropping and segmentation. Cropping keeps only the current point cloud, while segmentation also generates a deleted point cloud. The above is all the introduction to the left toolbar. In this session, we will look at the displays tab. The first one is for background color. Select the corresponding color for the background. The second one is to switch between different viewpoints. The third one is the clipping box. 
in addition to the rotation and drag to display the area of interest. You can also keep the cropping results by clicking the button to keep points inside the box. Click OK to generate point cloud data after clipping. Next are the color display settings that we just mentioned before. In addition to the several color display modes just mentioned, you can also display it in a single color. When displayed in RGB mode, click Settings to turn on off or remove noise and white spots. When displayed in elevation mode, click Settings to select from various combinations. The next one is to set the point size. The next one is to display it by boundary reinforcement or in x-ray format. The above are some rendering methods for point clouds. Next, when you hover the mouse over the point cloud, you can see the point cloud position, number of points, and offset in the lower right corner. When the point cloud is in our system coordinates, there is no offset. But if it is in geographic coordinates or absolute coordinates, you need to offset the overall value to make it in our system coordinates. Here displays the number of points. After the operation is done, right-click the rendered point cloud file to edit it. The first one is to rename it. The second is to view the point cloud information, including scan time, point amount, and scalar fields. The third and fourth ones are toggle selected and toggle visual for selecting or hiding the point cloud. The fifth one is to export cloud data. After the point cloud mapping is done, the data saved in the project path is the original point cloud data. That is, the saved point cloud is not colorized and has no absolute coordinates. So, if you have colorized and registered absolute coordinates for it, you need to save the result files separately here. The sixth one is to extract the trajectory. The seventh one is to extract control points. The eighth one is to add a configuration file. You can see that there are point cloud files in green and red status. For the green one, you can load and extract the configuration file. For the red one, you can only load the configuration file. The difference lies in file extraction. The red one means the file is not loaded, while the green one means it has been loaded. The configuration file mentioned here refers to the data file. The ninth one is to extract scanning pose data. The last one is to delete the point cloud data. The above are some functions you can use after right-clicking a point cloud. There are some quick ways to facilitate your operations. If you want to quickly query the location of a point, hold down Shift to select a point and see its coordinates. If you want to change language, click Help and select Language in the upper right corner. Click License to view the software activation status and time. Click Help to view the software help document. Click About to view the current version of the software and check for updates. Click the arrow in the upper right corner to hide or show the home page menu bar. This is our introduction to the auxiliary features. See you next time.